G2, they defeated Mad Lions. They locked their world's qualification. They are 9-2 and two since week 5. They have not lost since week 7 when they faced the mighty indestructible Schalke. Tyler, what is going on with this team? Is it is it just as simple as they had some early struggles, Perks had uh, unfortunate circumstances with his family, the team just needed more time to gel together this split? Is there more than that? What are you noticing from this team that just is making them so good again? Form is temporary and, you know, class is forever. It just It's a thing of, like, we've talked about this endlessly, and we've had these, you know, check updates, like, every week on the Rift Drawing, like, oh, is G2 in trouble? Is G2 in trouble? And <laughs> I feel like most of us, a majority of us, have been pretty calm, especially myself, being, no, they're going to make it. Until they are dead, until they are thrown down, until they are eliminated officially from playoffs and eliminated from Worlds, you would bet you would bet on them every day of the week. They just... They are a team that has shown us that they can play at the highest level of League of Legends possible. We saw them at the World Championships last year. They made it to the finals. They were MSI. They destroyed everyone there. You know, wrecking, model whopping, you know, Team Liquid in the finals in Taiwan. They've played at the highest level of League of Legends. These five players have... There's no uh, problem chemistry-wise. We don't have any issues when it comes to pure mechanical skill. Really, it just comes down to the fact that they had a slow start. It was Perks going back into the bot lane, Caps moving back into the mid lane, Perks obviously, you know, having the first few weeks of the season due to, you know, his family, uh, the, the personal issues with his father. It's a, it's a thing of it was going to take time, and it's a team where when everything clicked, where everything needs to be needs to happen when their backs are against the wall they're a team that has shown us time and time again they always know how to turn on the switch and to play as they can this is a team that they we should not doubt them they're a team that they've we they've earned the benefit of doubt there are many 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 teams in the league of legends world where they do not deserve the benefit of doubt g2 is one of those teams especially this five-man roster who get along so well who have probably the best chemistry of any team in the world alongside the sides like FPX and some of few other close knit teams that they deserve the benefit of the doubt when they don't look the greatest. And we gave them the benefit of the doubt. And as we saw with G2 and Fnatic, when it comes to playoffs, it's a whole different beast regular season, especially online. That's one thing, but to actually win in the playoffs, even if it's online, it's a whole different thing. A best of five is a whole different world. And G2 in that world is king. So let's continue the conversation with Fnatic then. Uh, like you said, Tyler, form is temporary, class is forever. The exact same can be said about Fnatic, can it not? They just swept Rogue on the path to Worlds qualification. Their job is not done, Emily. They still have one more game to go. They got to beat Schalke. They got to end the dream run, the miracle run, I should say, in order for Fnatic to qualify. But how is Fnatic playing? This is a different situation. They just were in a slump. A lot of their players didn't look so good early on in this split. What were they able to change around to make them at least closer to the Fnatic that fans would expect? So you know how we talk about, like, oh, Fnatic, um, they really like to focus on, like, a few select picks in terms of uh, how they want to play. Um, I, I thought Fnatic's drafts in the series against Rogue were really, really interesting. Uh, the the self-made Evelyn came out. Um, I'm not going to applaud their execution on the Kogma poke, uh, because I think it actually left a lot to be desired, but I really love that draft. Um, I think that this was, uh, like, I guess I just really liked, and again, like a lot has changed, uh, in terms of what you can pick, uh across the board because of mainly changes to what people are focusing on in the bot lane and then the top lane bot lane specifically is really interesting because uh we see things being focused on in china like the gin that uh other regions aren't picking up yet um but i liked uh i, I did like the way they played around senna i loved the self-made evelyn i thought that was great um, I, I, I feel like people are going to disagree with that, but I really liked it. Um, they found, a, a pick for Nemesis in, in the counter matchup with the Azir Lucian, which isn't always something that works out for every team. Uh, you know, we saw it not work out as well for Golden Guardians, for example, but that ended up being really, really good for Fnatic. And 
I think some of their issues have been, you know, getting Nemesis on something that he can really uh, kind of pop off on. Um, and they did in the series. And so I, I think, again, like a lot of these initial playoff games for me come down to how each team is reading the meta and, and what they're, uh, what they do end up picking. Um, and I did appreciate what Fnatic did in the series. I do think if they're going to play that Kogma poke again, they do need to execute it a bit better. If they're going to be going up against say G2, who they've, you know, historically had trouble, uh, besting in the past few years. So, um, I think that's also something to consider when you look at Fnatic going down the road, but they definitely put themselves in a really good position.